Hey, and welcome back to Locked On Braves. Hope you all had a great weekend. We'll be breaking down a couple of your questions here on this Monday edition of Locked On Braves, talking about some trade targets for Marcel Ozuna, some potential partners there, as well as does Trevor's story make sense for the Atlanta Braves. So we'll talk about that and some more on the lockout in this episode of Locked On Braves. So let's get into it. This is Stacey Gotsoulias, DC Lundberg, Ryan Finkelstein, Taylor Blake Ward, host of Locked On Yankees, Locked On Mariners, Locked On Mets, Locked On Angels, and you're listening to Locked On Braves. Locked On Braves. Locked On Braves. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hey, and welcome back to Locked On Braves, brought to you by the Locked On Podcast Network, where we talk about your favorite teams every day. I am your host, Jake Mastriani, and you can follow me on Twitter at shortstopball and check out my bio there to see everywhere I am covering the game of baseball, including the Atlanta Braves over at tomahawktake.com. Appreciate it if you go over there and check out my written work as well. Also, make sure you follow the podcast on Twitter at lockdown underscore Braves and make sure that you rate, review, and subscribe to the Lockdown Braves podcast wherever you get your podcast. And please subscribe to us on YouTube as well. And I mentioned the Twitter thing. Please go out there and follow us on Twitter if you're not already. I would like to see that follower count and get up. I think we're we're almost at about 400 followers and I know a lot more than that listen to this podcast because I see the download numbers. So please uh, if you do enjoy the podcast, please go follow us on Twitter. I'm trying to be much more interactive there, especially during this lockout. I'll be asking some topics that you want to hear on the podcast, kind of letting you control the topics on the podcast right now, is which is going to be the case on today's episode, and which was partly the case on Friday's episode as well. So if you're not, please go follow us on Twitter. Really want to get that uh, Twitter follower count up so that we can have more engagement there and so that you can be more a part of the podcast as well. So please go follow us on Twitter. I really would appreciate it. And as always, thank for, thanks for making Lockdown Braves your first listen each and every day. We post episodes daily, five days a week, Monday through Friday, and we are free and available on all platforms. Like I said, today I'm going to be taking some more of your questions uh, from Twitter. Uh, sent out a question uh, Monday morning on Twitter asking what you wanted to talk about today because we are in a lockout. There's not a ton to talk about. And so uh, we're going to be talking about some potential trade partners for Marcel Ozuna. We're going to be looking at whether or not Trevor Story is a fit and what the future is with Dansby Swanson as well in connection with that idea. And then we'll give a little bit of update on the lockout. Not much to talk about there. And I'm going to talk about some plans I have for the rest of the week on the podcast. So a lot to get into. Very exciting uh, episode here, I think. Um, let's just start with the Marcel Ozuna topic because it is one I'm very uh, passionate about. As you heard when the news broke that Major League Baseball only suspended him for 20 games and suspended him retroactively. Not very happy about that. I believe it's with the Braves in a very difficult situation. I think their best scenario right now is to trade him. But who can they trade him to? Who is going to be willing, you know, to take that on? You know, not only is it a bad contract money-wise at this point, in my opinion, he's set to make $18 million, you know, over the next couple of years here. But then, you know, you also just have kind of a, a, a plague in the clubhouse, essentially, with what Ozuna has gone through. So uh, this question came from uh, SID Jacob Y-A-C-O-B on uh, Twitter, uh, asking possible trade scenario, or, or I'm sorry, this one came from Bowtie um, on Twitter, said possible trades for Ozuna. So I believe the Braves will try to trade Ozuna again. I think this is the best scenario for Alex Antopoulos would be to trade him because your other options are to play him or cut him. And you cut him, you have to pay him his $53 million. You know, we've, we've already been over all of these scenarios. So the best of that is obviously to try and trade him, see if they can, um, you know, get rid of some of that money, save some, some money on that contract. It's not going to be, it's not going to be pretty. I mean, if you're thinking, you're going to trade Ozuna and save $53 million and get a prospect in return. That is not happening. <laughs> Let me just go ahead and make that clear. That is 
not happening. This will not be a pretty trade if it happens. This will essentially be a salary dump. And not only that, the Braves will probably have to tie a prospect to it. This will essentially be a team that wants to buy prospects, that's willing to eat some of Marcelo Zuna's money in order to buy prospects. Now, we just saw a similar trade, well, albeit not a similar situation, where the Milwaukee Brewers traded Jackie Bradley Jr. into pretty solid prospects in David Hamilton and Alex Benayas. Benayas was just a recent third-round pick to the Boston Red Sox for Hunter Renfro. Uh, and the Red Sox essentially spent $10 million to get two pretty solid prospects, um, two prospects that were in the Brewers' top 30. So it's going to have to be a deal like that where you can find a team that's willing to spend a little bit of money in order to buy some prospects. And I don't expect it to be a lot. I don't, I don't see a team spending $20 million in order to do that with Marcelo Zuna. Um, now, at the same time, you may have a team. Again, I, I believe Marcelo Zuna deserves a second chance. Whether or not that's in baseball, I don't know. That's up for debate. But I feel like he will at least get a second chance somewhere. Somebody will let him play. I do not think it will be the Atlanta Braves. But I, I do believe there's somebody out there that will give him a second chance. And Again, this guy was an MVP finalist in 2020. I mean, there is potential there for him to be a good player. You take everything off the field, you know, out of the equation, Marcelo Zuna can still be a very good player for somebody. I just do not think it will be the Atlanta Braves, nor do I think it should be the Atlanta Braves. So you may find a team that's willing to take on that risk of the baggage that comes along with Ozuna right now in order to try to get some production out of him. Again, I still don't think the Braves can trade or there's a team that will will trade for him with that in mind. They know the situation the Braves is in. It's a terrible situation because they know the Braves just want to, to dump this player to be rid of him and as much money as they can save in the process. So teams know that. But, I mean, there are teams that will trade for him. They will put him in their outfield or at their DH spot and see – what he can do if he can, you know, still play, you know, if he's still that MVP caliber player that he was in 2020. Um, so there, there may be some teams like that out there that will, will take on a little bit more of the contract because they will play him and they're okay playing him. Not all teams will be like that. You'll have some teams that potentially, hopefully for the Braves sake that will just trade him in order to buy prospects and then cut him and, and just, you know, eat, you know, 10, 15, 20 million where the Braves will have to eat, you know, 30 million of that contract, which is better than eating 53. Because like I say, I don't think he can play for the Braves. So I think their two options are you either cut him, pay him 53 million, or try and trade him and save, you know, 10, 15, 20 million. Uh, I think it's probably the most they'd be able to save in that type of deal. So, you know, looking around at teams that could possibly fit, I think you have to be looking for a um, a team that, that has the money, obviously, to trade for a player like this. You know, the Red Sox are a big market team. They're willing to spend ten $10 million in order to in order to get some prospects to help build their system. They were able to do that. The Cubs are one team that I looked at as a team that you know has money. They're also somewhat in a rebuild. They may be looking to buy some prospects and they could take on you know, 10, 15, 20 million dollars of Ozuna's contract, but then you'd have to give the you have to give the Cubs, you know, a couple of pretty decent prospects. Now, is that worth it? I don't know what the prospects are like. I don't even really want to speculate on that. But like I just said, the Brewers just had to attach two top 30 prospects to Jackie Bradley Jr. and the 10 million that he was owed for Hunter Renfro, who is a pretty solid outfielder in himself. So um you know, you're looking at that type of deal to, you know, maybe not to elite level prospects, but to really solid prospects that will help deepen a farm system. I think that's what you're you're looking at. So the Cubs were one team um, that I thought about. The Rockies were another uh, team that I thought of originally as a team that, you know, could uh, maybe they don't have all the finances in the world, but I think they're a team that could 
take on Ozuna, you know, maybe send some money or, or the Braves would send money to, to the Rockies, obviously, but, um, you know, maybe get Ozuna and, and the Braves pay down some of his contracts. So you're only paying him, you know, 10 million a year or something like that, maybe even less. And I think the, the Rockies would play Ozuna. I mean, it's in a, you know, in a, in a market that's not really going to be criticized where there's not going to be a huge media coverage over Ozuna being there. I think it's kind of a place that is hidden away in my mind is the way I kind of feel about uh, Colorado. So he's, he, that's a destination where I think the Rockies could trade for him, get a couple of prospects in return and get a player that could potentially be really good for a cheap amount because I think the Braves will still have to eat some money in that type of deal and include prospects with him. So the Rockies were a team I thought of as somebody that could trade for him, play him, get him at a cheaper deal and potentially get a couple of prospects in return as well. So, you know, that was one team that came to mind, uh, or those were two teams that came to mind for me were the Rockies and the Cubs. You know, there are other teams out there that, that fit, that may not, you know, Braves may not be able to get the better deal. I think those are two teams where the Braves could likely get the best potential deal because I think the Cubs could take on some money and obviously want some prospects as they try to turn things around. And I think the Rockies are a place where they they wouldn't mind playing him. I don't think they would get the the media hit, the PR hit that other big market teams would get. But I'm sure there are other teams out there, you know, rebuilding rebuilding teams that would, you know, take Ozuna and 10, 15, 20 million along with a couple of really good prospects and then just cut them uh, and, and, you know, eat the rest of that money, essentially, you know, paying paying, like I said, 10, 15, 20 million dollars in order to get some some really solid prospects. So, you know, when you're looking for places to trade Ozuna, you know, that's what you're looking for. You know, you're looking for big market teams that can take on some of that contract and are looking for prospects. And you're looking for, for small market teams that need some prospects and be willing to take on some money as well. And you're looking for teams that might be willing, you know, low, you know, teams that aren't in the spotlight that might be willing to take on the baggage that Ozuna has in order to get a good player for pretty cheap as well as get some prospects in return. So again, I think there's a, a number of places out there that could fit, but still it's not going to be an easy move for Azuna because like I said, teams know that the Braves are desperate to get rid of Azuna and to try to save as much money as they can. So it's not, you know, the Braves aren't coming from a place of leverage here when they're trying to trade Ozuna. So it makes it very difficult to get anything of really value from the Braves side of things. I mean, it's really just a, a salary dump is all that it is. And other teams know that. So, but I trust Alex Antopoulos. I mean, one of his biggest moves when he first came here was a huge salary dump with him, with the Braves and the Dodgers. Um, so, you know, I have faith in Alex that, that he can do that, that he can get that type of deal done. It's not going to be easy. Like I said, when I talked about, you know, the biggest, uh, goals, biggest things left to accomplish once the lockout ends, I think the Ozuna thing may even be at the forefront ahead of Freddie Freeman. I think that may be holding up some of the Freddie Freeman stuff is what can they do with Ozuna? Where can they trade him? How much money can they save? by trading him i i think that may be priority number one right now when the lockout ends is finding that potential trade partner for marcel ozuna all right next i want to get into the trevor story discussion whether or not he makes sense for the braves or not before we do that let me tell you about direct tv does this sound familiar you've got one device that lets you catch the game live another that lets you stream your favorite shows you're watching sports highlights on your phone and you've got your neighbor's best friends log in for the good stuff well, I want to tell you about a simple way to get all the entertainment you love without the hassle and a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream, and it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before so that you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again. And the best part, there's no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required and content varies by package. All right, so this is our second question here. This one is coming from SID on Twitter, Jacob, Y-A-C-O-B, and then a bunch of numbers afterwards. Um, but they say possible scenarios of signing Trevor's story and trading Swanson and the idea of Olsen at first base as well. 
uh, said there was a good article on Tomahawk Take. Thanks for the shout out, shout out there as to why Story makes sense. So, you know, there's been a lot of talk about Trevor Story being a good fit for the Braves for a while now. And I understand that. And, you know, I think he would obviously be a good fit. I think he'd be a good fit in a, a lot of places. He's a very good player. But let's let's talk about Trevor Story for a minute. He just turned 29 in November. He's probably going to make around $20 million a year right now. It'll be trade rumors projects him at six years and $126 million, so that's right around $21 million a year. He's coming off a, a down season in his terms, the, uh, slash 251, 329, 471, with an 801 OPS and 24 home runs. Uh, so, again, not a, a great, uh, not a great season, at least as far as his standards go. For the career, his career, he's slashing 272, 340, 523 with an 863 OPS and around 30 home runs a year. Um, and he's played a lot of games. He's played 145, 157, 145, 59 games in the shortened season and 142 games this last season. So been a very you know durable, dependable player, two-time All-Star. One thing people always look at when you're talking about players who came up with the Rockies, players that have played in Colorado for a long time is you look at their ho home road splits and they are very drastic when you look at Trevor Story. At home he's slashing 303, 369, 603 with a 972 OPS while on the road he's slashing 241, 310, 442 with a 752 OPS. So very drastic you know numbers there. You know, obviously, that was a lot of talk with Nolan Arenado as well, and he has done okay in St. Louis. I believe Trevor Story will be fine outside of Colorado. I think, think he'll still be a very, very good player, an all-star caliber player. Obviously, he's great. You know, the metrics say he's great defensively. I honestly have not, you know, watched him enough on a daily basis to know how great he is defensively. I, I don't put a lot of stock in defensive metrics. I know some out there do are big believers of them. I believe you have to watch a player on a daily basis to know how great they are defensively because, again, you look at the metrics for Dansby Swanson and they average defender. I watch Dansby Swanson every day. He is not a below average defender. I can certainly tell you that. So I don't put a lot of stock in defensive metrics, but everything I read here, see on Trevor Story will tell you he's a gold glove, you know, caliber type shortstop. So Again, a, a very good hitter, a very good defender. Just turned 29, going to be making around $20 million a year. That's what Trevor's story is. Now, again, I don't really want to compare him to Dansby Swanson, but I mean, that's kind of what the question is and what we're doing here. So you look at Dansby Swanson. Uh, he's, gonna, he's about to turn 28 here pretty soon, projected to make around $10 million in his final season of arbitration before becoming a free agent. This past season, he slashed 248, 311, 449 with a 760 OPS and 27 home runs. So not that not that worse of a year offensively than what Trevor Story put up. And, you know, like I said, the metrics defensively don't look great for Dansby Swanson. But, again, I think any Braves fan that watches him knows how good he is defensively. But if you're just comparing the two, obviously Trevor Story – is the better player, the better overall player. Now he is a, a year older. He's going to cost $10 million more a year. Is that worth the potential upgrade there? And, you know, I guess the flip side of that is you could get something in return for Dansby. What are you going to get in return for Dansby that's going to be that valuable? And, and I love – Dansby Swanson. Anybody who's listened to the podcast knows I love Dansby Swanson. I, I think he's a great leader, great teammate. I think he's a winner. I mean, the Braves just won a World Series with him at shortstop as your infield defensive leader. Um, so I think he's a winning type player. But you're not going to get much in return for Dansby Swanson, a player in his last year of arbitration before becoming a free agent. The return in trading him is just not going to be anything significant. So. It, it really comes down to are the Braves really going to sign Trevor Story for 20 million a year, 21, 22 million a year 
spend you know 10 more million on Trevor Story? Is he worth that much more than Dansby Swanson? I don't know. That's a, a tough decision. Just knowing where the Braves are with Freddie Freeman and how they don't love to spend a lot on free agents, um, I just don't see that happening. What what I will say is if a Trevor Story deal happens, you could see a one-year deal. You know Alex Antopoulos loves these one-year deal, deals. Trevor Story's coming off a down year. If for some reason you know he wanted to take a, a one-year deal to try to reestablish his market and then hit free agency next year, he, he'd still be 30. So, I mean, he would still you know, probably be able to get a five, six-year deal. You know, that's something that could – potentially happen that I can see happen. That's the only way really that I see it happening with the Braves is if you get Trevor Story on a one year deal. You know, if he goes out in free agency and just those five, six year deals aren't there, um, that maybe he does take a one year deal. Now the Braves would still lose a draft pick in that scenario because uh, the Rockies obviously extended him a qualifying offer. But that is the only way I see Trevor Story coming to the Atlanta Braves if it, if he decides he wants to take a a one year deal. Now if he did that He'd probably still it still had to be a very high AAV. So we're talking twenty five to thirty million a year for Trevor Story, and I just don't know where that fits in the budget. So again, I, I get the I get the people out there that that want Trevor Story. I think he could be a good fit with the Braves. I just don't see it happening. I don't see him being ten million dollars better than Dansby Swanson. And maybe I'm completely wrong about that. Maybe I value Dansby Swanson way too highly and that's probably true because i do love Dansby swanson but i just don't see the braves valuing him 10 million dollars more than Dansby swanson you know and if it's on a one-year deal it's probably going to be 20 million more dollars 20 million dollars more than what you're going to pay Dansby swanson so i just don't see that happening and the the idea of trading Dansby swanson you just you're not going to get you're not going to get anything significant of return for him you're just not as much as i I love him. The value for for him in the trade market is just it's not going to be anything of significance. So Anthony Swanson, your shortstop. I believe he's your shortstop. Um, again, unless Story wants to take a one year deal and unless something just doesn't work out with Freddie Freeman, he's going to be your shortstop. All right, we'll take another break here and then we'll come back and talk about the lockout. Before we do that, let me tell you about Built Bar this holiday season. Grab the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar or even better than a candy bar. Built Bar filled with so much holiday goodness, rich with decadent flavor, covered in chocolate, but amazingly low in calorie sugars, net carb and fat, and high in protein. You get the best of both worlds, delicious and healthy. So many flavors you'll have a hard time choosing with raspberry or mint brownie, cherry or double chocolate, cookies and cream or peanut butter brownie. Bill Bar gives you that extra fuel that you need to bust down those mall doors and battle all the holiday shoppers. Or if you're just standing in endless shopping lines, Bill Bar can give you that extra something to keep you going. So throw one in your jacket or purse. You never know when you're going to need it. Like some of those marshmallowy treats around the holidays, you need to get your hands on Bill Bar Puffs. They're light, fluffy, and marshmallowy through and through. Different flavors, all covered in chocolate. Tastes so good, you won't believe that they're filled with protein. Go to Built.com, use promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off your order. Again, that's LOCKED15 at Built.com for 15% off. All right, some of you may hear the thunder in the background here. I'm going to try and wrap this up quickly before I lose power. My lights are starting to to flicker here uh, on Monday morning uh, in Birmingham, Alabama. So if you're listening in Atlanta, there's a storm coming your way. Um, But not much movement on the lockout over the weekend. One thing that I found interesting from Rob Manfred is that he said any rules changes are pretty much off the table at this point, meaning the discussions are all about money. And I kind of already had talked about that, alluded to that. We know that it's all about money for both sides. But uh, it was interesting to hear him say, you know, any type of rule changes, you know, pitch clock, anything of that that they've been testing out in, uh, you know, in, in different leagues is seemingly off the table at the moment, which makes me think is the DH off the table at the moment. I, I would not think so i would not think that would be included in any kind of rules discussions um it seems pretty clear the dh is probably going to happen but i thought i would throw that out there i would kind of like to see the the dh not come to the national league uh especially the braves have some pretty good hitters uh hitting pitchers at the moment but i still think that's probably coming but kind of interesting to hear rob manfred admit that in a press conference that uh any rules changes are off the table, meaning they're basically just focusing on the, the economics 
of the game right now in the finances. Um, and I got a great suggestion. I'll make sure I get this name right on Twitter. I uh, asked, you know, what you wanted to talk about over this lockout. And Austin Webb on Twitter, uh, at Austin Matthews, said, uh, comparing the players for each position between the 95 championship Braves team and the 2021 group, I definitely want to do that. You know, somebody who grew up in the 90s, and I was young when the 95 championship happened, but I certainly remember remember the players of that team and have, you know, watched replays of it since then. So I think that's going to be a cool idea, something I'm going to start doing uh, the rest of the week and maybe into next week as well. May also have a very cool guest for you uh, either later this week or early next week. Uh, hoping to have somebody on uh, that I know you will really enjoy. But I uh, appreciate that suggestion there for Austin. I think I'm definitely going to do that the rest of the week, comparing that 95 team to the 2021 team for the Braves. That will do it for this episode of Locked on Braves. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Locked on underscore Braves. Follow me at Shortstop Ball. Please continue to send in any questions, suggestions for the show that you want to hear talked about and i'll make sure to include those and there goes another lightning strikes so we are going to get out here make sure you subscribe to the lockdown braves podcast wherever you get your podcast and we will talk to you next time